Everybody loves a good show, and the after party is where we tap in and celebrate that show. Imagine that life is the show. Join us, Tam and Portia, at the after party where we'll celebrate life. The good, the bad, and the ugly. This is where things get real, because that's life, and we're going to keep it real. If you want to laugh and cry and be real, this is the show for you. Come party with us. <laughs> hey, Tim. Hey, Portia. Hi, y'all. How y'all doing? Mm. Welcome in. Tap in. Tap in. Tap in. Yes, tap in with us as we go through the stages of healing. Y'all already know from season two, episode one, that this whole thing is about healing. And today, Tam and Portia will tap into the seven stages of healing. Each stage is necessary to your healing and development journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pay attention y'all because recognizing these stages can and will help you to navigate this oftentimes difficult journey. Okay. So grab your drinks and tap in with us. All right. Grab your drinks. And listen, the cocktail of the episode, this episode's cocktail is a vodka sour. And mm -hmm. let me tell you something, a little fun fact. Mm -hmm. Vodka sours were first introduced as a method to combat scurvy among sailors. Listen, it has healing properties. So drink up guilt-free. Cheers! <laughs> and if you've been joining us, you now know what very important segment this is. Mm -hmm. It's very important. It is our karaoke break! Make it a better place for you and for me. And I embrace there are people dying if you care enough for the living. Yes. <laughs> no, the word okay, sorry. <laughs> Heal the world. We felt like this would be appropriate <laughs> for this subject. And thank you so much for our concert light team yes, because yes. where would we I be? A, I didn't have a cigarette lighter, so the next best thing. That is what everybody's using nowadays, though, at these concerts. They're using their phone lights. So that was perfect. It is. It is. <laughs> Heal the world. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do. One step at a time. Okay. And before we get um a little further into the healing, let's go on over to our vendor table. Okay. Meet and us over there. <laughs> yeah, meet us over there. Today we have Shan, not Stan, and she is a DMV hairstylist and a certified life coach. Think about that combination. Okay? Listen, because don't y'all tell y'all hairstylists everything? Come on Me now. Barbara's and all the things. Okay. <laughs> yes. She is your guide towards a life filled with ease, health, and flow, all in appearance and in life in general. So okay. let's check out something from Shan, not Stan. So good. I'm so excited. If y'all make sure y'all check her out, the link is in the bio. Y'all make sure y'all check out Shan. My um, Stan. <laughs> yes, Stan. She looks amazing. I love it. Go on and check her out. Okay. Get yes. your life open and your hair done at the same time. It's okay. not healing to me. Get your oh. hair and healing on. Hair and healing. Hair and healing. <laughs> Yeah. So y'all, let's party. Let's get it's right fun. into the episode. 
Are you ready? Are you ready? Listen, do y'all have stage fright? Meaning that you don't want to tackle these stages. We're going to tackle them today. So stick around. Tap in seven stages of healing. Ooh. The first stage, mm -hmm. awareness. Awareness. The first step in emotional healing is becoming aware of the emotional pain and trauma that needs healing. This yeah. involves recognizing the feelings and behaviors that are causing distress and identifying the source of the trauma. It's almost like, you know, when you are an alcoholic or a drug addict, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing is to admit that you have a problem. And so I feel like with this awareness, like you at least are recognizing that there is even a problem, right? Right, you right. See it's a problem, you like okay, I'm, I'm, I'm reacting this way and I'm doing these things and I'm moving this way and I feel this way. You know, you're, you're finally saying this is where I am in yeah. life, right? Yeah. I, I think that is so important. I think a lot of us lack awareness. Mm -hmm. and it's in lots really, of areas of our life. In lots of areas, okay? Um, and it's really sad because if we were more self-aware, mm -hmm. um, we would probably, we not probably, we would be better off. Mm -hmm. um, but we walk around kind of like know-it-alls and kind of like, well, this is me. And kind of like, you know, it's not a problem how mm -hmm. you're showing up. Um, and you're not really aware that you're leaving little minds behind everywhere you go and people are stepping on them. Ooh. And so I think that is very key um, that you have this awareness. And, mm -hmm. and I think once you do become aware, mm -hmm. it's like, oh my gosh, you look back at what you left in your wake and you'd be like, oh my gosh, I, now I see why that blew up. Now I see why that didn't work out. Yes. Well. So ooh, I have already did this part for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think I'm still discovering stuff. And I think that's a part of the process, right? Yes. It's did y'all grab y'all journals? Yeah, come on. You better be taking Write it note. down. Taking oh. note. Because I know I'm not out here alone in this feeling for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Are you aware? Are you aware on what things you even need to tackle in this moment? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. write it down. Number one step. Be Number aware. One. Be aware. All yeah. right. So the second step is acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this step is acknowledging the pain and the trauma and the accepting that is a part of one's life. Yikes. I'm a little shaken just even reading this because... <laughs> Like, okay, okay, enough. Get out of my business already. Um, <laughs> this involves admitting to oneself that there is a problem and taking responsibility for one's own healing. Okay. Woo wee. Is this that responsibility word? Yikes. Everybody wanna be responsible until they don't want to be responsible. Uh, hey, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Until yeah. it's uncomfortable, until it hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's easy. It's it's a lot easier to be, you know, responsible for your assignment on the job, or mm -hmm. you know, responsible for making sure these kids get to school. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to being responsible for you and your own healing and mindset, mm -hmm. that is very uncomfortable because then now you have mm -hmm. to really dig deep into how we got here what yes. role you played in it yes oh so it's really uncomfortable to yes. take that sort of responsibility absolutely i totally agree tam don't nobody want to admit to themselves what they lack in don't nobody want to face the truth absolutely. about themselves i can tell you about your whole truth i can see all your trauma and i can point it out but um for me it's like wait a minute what I don't I say that all the time? I be knowing yeah. shit. Your yeah. shit. Not my yeah. shit. Because my yeah. shit, I turn a blind eye to. 
Absolutely. But your that's shit, I know all about it. And I think that that's yeah. very true of a lot of people. Yeah. It's not, I'm not the only one. There's a whole lot of people that sit in judgment and mm -hmm. sit up on high and look down low at everybody else and say, yeah, this is where they messed up. They dropped yep. the ball here. They yep. didn't do that. They need yep. to work on this. But yep. meantime, a lot of times they're showing up exactly the way that yep. they are seeing these people. And the reason why they recognize it is because they looking in the mirror. It's familiar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Absolutely. not because you've experienced it with other people. It's because you're also a product of your environment. Um, so you need to acknowledge that and stop thinking your shit don't stink. Because it do. Like, it's literally... It's funky. It's place. rotten. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, <laughs> and so next that leads us to acceptance mm -hmm. the third step is accepting that healing is possible mm -hmm. and committing to the journey this involves letting go of any doubts or fears about the healing process and trusting that it is possible to move forward yes acceptance yes. It is possible to heal. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you feel today. I don't care if that thing is still hurting like it happened yesterday and it happened 25 years ago. It is possible to heal from it. But also you have to do the work. Yes. You have to do the work. You have to really overcome the fear of facing it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. the fear of being alone. Woo! Knock on my door. Okay. Child, I stepped on my own damn toes. Listen. <laughs> okay. Sometimes That's you cool. fear being alone. You fear rejection. You fear all these things. And so oh. you're not. And the reason why you, you have this fear mm -hmm. oftentimes is because. It is a product of something that's very broken in you. You have to accept that the healing is possible. Yes. And then work toward it. Yes. Yes. You could do it. Accepting. Wow. I mean, even when, yeah, accepting when the healing is possible. Because I think we get stuck in that. We allow our fear and the doubt that I won't ever find another love like this. When truly, this was never loved from the get go. But okay, never had a love like this before. Listen, they yeah. made music for that kind of stuff. Back exactly, in exactly. Like, but we be so fearful and doubtful of ourselves, mm -hmm. and it just speaks towards again, like I said before, the lack of acceptance of oneself. Mm -hmm. But you are expecting other people to accept you. How does that work? How do you stand an expectation for that and you don't even accept you? And that's being alone? Child. That's why I'm out here dating myself right now. Because I, I, I'm going to be scared to be by myself. And then I want you to be with me by myself. Like, you're with me. Like, it don't make sense. Like, the math ain't happen. But also, that is like having to look in the mirror every single day. That's why a lot of people fear being alone, because you're facing yourself every single day. And you're finding out that your shit does think. Yeah. And so it's, a again, a very uncomfortable space to be in. Extremely. You have to feel the pain. Yes. Feel that pain, which is the fourth step. This step is allowing oneself to feel pain and trauma without judgment or avoidance. This involves experiencing the emotions and sensations that come with the trauma, even if they are uncomfortable or painful. Mm. Now, Tam, I don't know about you, mm. but I'm not trying to feel no pain. I don't like pain. I don't like it. I am a big crybaby when it comes to pain, like physical pain. And now, and you know what? Let me rephrase that. I used to be a huge crybaby when it came to pain until I really experienced some pain. Uh -huh. And I realized I was stronger mentally than I thought I was. There go back to that fear, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I really accepted 
that this pain is only here momentarily. It's not forever. It's just this moment. So mm -hmm. therefore, I don't have to live in the painful space. I can feel the pain, and I know this is only for a moment. I'm going to come up out of this pain. Yeah. If yeah. I can feel it and get through it, I'll be good. But is there anything wrong with being a crybaby about it? No, I think um, the difference is the, the stint in which you are in that space. Okay. I mm -hmm. think it's nothing wrong with you emoting. If you want to be a crybaby about it, you get a paper mm -hmm. cut and it's the worst thing in the world in that moment, yes. Yeah. But I think it's the reprogramming of your mind that, again, this is just a moment. Yes. This is not... This paper cut is not going to be here for forever. I'm not mm -hmm. going to feel this pain for forever. Mm -hmm. And if I dwell in that space and be like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be here. What am I do? I can't do nothing. <laughs> the finger is dead. Forget it. The whole hand is out. I just, <laughs> just cut it all off, doctor. <laughs> just cut it all off. I can't possibly survive. <laughs> it's like, bruh. Yes. Look at it and be like, Yes, this hurts. Yes, it does hurt. But guess what? It's going to heal. Mm -hmm. It's going to oh. regenerate new skin. Yes. And it's not. I'm not going to feel that anymore. And it may leave a scar and it may not. And it may look brand new. And I forget it ever even happened. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I think it's, 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 a, it's okay to emote and be a crybaby. I think it's different when you just choose to stay and dwell in that space. Mm -hmm. And that's but, what we always going to do. But, you know, you tell me all the time, like, it's okay to feel your feelings. Yes. You know, yes. And, and sometimes you do need a minute to sit in it. Yes. Um, but if you, get, if you get stuck in thinking that every bad thing that happens to you means that this is the end of the world. Yes. Then it will be the end of the world. It will world. be. Yes. You, know, you yes. can't be stuck there. You you have to know that this pain is only temporary. It will yeah. not last forever. Yeah. And to really you you can sit in it and you can um grieve it and, and deal with it. Absolutely. But then you have to be able to move forward after that. Right. Like what's next after that? Right. And that does bring us to the next point of grieving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the fifth step yeah. um the, it's the fifth step is acknowledging the losses that have come with the trauma and allowing oneself to truly grieve them mm -hmm. this involves recognizing the things that have been lost mm -hmm. as a result of the trauma such as trust safety or a sense of self and allowing oneself to mourn these losses Ooh. you have to allow yourself space yeah mourn the loss yes. because the loss is is real listen sometimes our friends be like real dismissive of the grief that you're in in that in that moment yeah 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 i challenge you to ignore their asses if they be that way or get <laughs> you some new friends i'm serious though because just because you wouldn't have reacted that way. You wouldn't have responded that way. Yeah. It wouldn't have felt like that to you. Does not invalidate my feelings. I experienced this quite a bit mm -hmm. in 2023 mm -hmm. where people were dismissing or minimizing mm -hmm. the grief that I was in to the point that I stopped sharing. Yeah. And I started saying that I was okay when I wasn't. And so therefore I didn't grieve it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't grieve it. I just I almost just like cut it off like it was nothing. Yeah. But I was still in a really bad space. And so it took me that much longer to really deal with it because I, I was embarrassed that I was still in that space. Mm -hmm. And everybody thought I should have been out of the space. So then now I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yep. Allow yourself to grieve that thing. Yes. And don't worry about what others say. This is your truth, your feelings, your mm -hmm. healing journey. And yes. nobody can take it for you. Nobody. We can go with you 
but we can't take the journey for you. Take it for you. Can't take it for you. Yeah, I am definitely guilty of um, being that friend. And also on the flip side of being in a position that I feel like I have to act like I'm okay Mm -hmm. to make everybody else feel comfortable with what I'm experiencing. Right. Because like you said, nobody really understands except for you. Mm -hmm. You know all the moments and things that you encountered Mm -hmm. created and you know the truth to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, grief makes a lot of people very uncomfortable and a lot of people really don't know what to say or do during that time. A lot of it can be very misguided. Mm -hmm. and also avoidant and Mm -hmm. also like it's a lot of trauma around it especially with you know I'm always going to speak towards the black experience because that's the experience that I'm experiencing okay anywho but towards with our people that's how we are for sure yes like you know you're giving a little pass when it's your mom you're giving a little pass when it's your father like a parental figure maybe Mm -hmm. even a child but not most times we don't give passes when people are grieving Mm-hmm. losses we'd be like okay when you gonna get over this especially when it's been a breakup especially when it's been a friendship mm-hmm. stuff like that but those are very detrimental towards us and we they leave wounds and they be big open gaping wounds mm-hmm. that take time to heal mm-hmm. and you wanting me to be in another space it's not accurate and it's not proper mm-hmm. Just recently learned that the stages of grief, the symptoms there of them can last from one to two years. Mm-hmm. One to two years. And we be thinking it should be something quicker. Than right. That. You ain't right. over there yet. Right. Like you, you already knew he wasn't shit. Why you still <gasps> like, you know, but I also already knew this person had a terminal illness. It doesn't make it hurt less. Yes. Once the loss has occurred, it doesn't, you know, you still trying to make sense of it, whether it be with God or well, why they didn't tell me sooner than, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Maybe it's something. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of questions in it. Mm-hmm. It's a lot that goes into that. And, you know, talk about the overthinking, the mindset, the mind just be going, going, going. It's a lot attached to that. And I think that we all can be guilty of not allowing or giving, or making space, especially when we're not used to anybody doing it for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so it is definitely a trauma response. Mm -hmm. It Mm -hmm. it definitely is. And also, you know, from my point of view, being on the other side of it, when I see somebody that I love hurting, Mm. I want the hurt to stop. And I am very much so an empath to the point that I would I want to take it on for you. If I could, I would carry it for mm-hmm, you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very difficult. It's difficult on both sides. It's um, definitely difficult. It's difficult on both sides. But, you know, it's very interesting. Grieving. Grieving. It has no timetable. It, it just is what it is. You have to let people go through their process. Absolutely. Let- And this is definitely something that we are going to unpack. We want you guys to know that we are giving you an overview of what is to come. And so each of these stages, we are going to unpack them as the season progresses. They will all be have their own episode dedicated to them. So don't think, oh my goodness, this is too much. And why I didn't get enough information. (laughs) There will be more information. We're going to give y'all information overload because we really, really want to heal and want y'all to heal. Mm -hmm. And we are going to do this work together as a community and unpack all of these things. So don't worry. There'll be more to come. (laughs) For sure. That takes us to the next step, which is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. This big step is forgiving oneself and others for any harm caused by the trauma. This involves letting go of anger, blame, resentment, and finding compassion and understanding for oneself and others. 2023, I started to learn this lesson. It was very difficult for me. I never considered myself to be an unforgiving type of person. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give you chance after chance after chance, you know, probably not in my best interest. But again, when you're grieving and people have an expectation for you, <laughs> and it's just kind of hard to be like, I don't hold no hard feelings, but also. I hold <laughs> all hard feelings. <laughs> And it's like, wait a minute, God be like, wait a minute, did, are, what, what's happening? Mm-hmm. Um, so it did start to build for me. It, it was building for me for a while. I have finally come to terms with, I have to let that go. And I have to not, because I don't want to be resentful. I mm-hmm. don't want to have bitterness in my heart and unable to move forward in life. Because even if I do actively move forward, mm-hmm. it's going to show up. You know what I'm saying? Because it's still there. I didn't deal with it. And, oh, child. Listen. But do you have to forgive to let go? I wonder. My forgiveness is giving you grace. Mm. It's acknowledging that you may not fully understand the weight of your decisions. Mm-hmm. Therefore, just like God gives me grace and mm-hmm. the weight of my decisions, I have to extend that to you. Mm. And so that's the compassion of it all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I understand mm-hmm. that about myself. Therefore, I can understand that about you. Mm-hmm. That's so. good. I do think, though, that you have to forgive the situation and to mm-hmm. move on. Forgiveness is not acceptance. It that just part. means that I'm forgiving you mm-hmm. for me, for mm-hmm. my healing, for mm-hmm. my peace. I am acknowledging what you have done to me Mm -hmm. and I am releasing you. Sometimes I'm releasing you into the wild, never to come back here again, but I am releasing you from the, any of the guilt and the anger that Mm -hmm. I was feeling about it. And so whether or not you even apologized that part, Cause sometimes you don't get this apology that you're looking for. You don't. You don't. You and have I- to be good with forgiving them, even if the apology never comes. Because if you are waiting for that, then your healing is tied to someone else. That part. Mm-mm. And I refuse to tie my anchor to you any longer. Mm-hmm. I'm having my anchor tied to me, period. I say that all the time in relationships, any type of relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Friendships, romantic relationships. Mm-hmm. In relationships, you're holding on and angry and they done moved on with their lives and they skipping yeah. to my loo, right? Mm-hmm. And you still holding on. And so they are still controlling you. Yes. Even when you're not together. Mm-hmm. I, I don't need nobody else controlling me. Not man. Nobody. So go ahead. Act the fool. Do what you're going to do. I forgive you. Now, what's next? Hashi. It's Hashi. <laughs> go with God. <laughs> go with God. Seriously. I'm going to uh, start telling people that. Go with God. Go with God. Because I don't, I don't have nothing else to give. I have no more space to allow... Um, but I'm praying for you. And I really am. Mm-hmm. I really am. Mm-hmm. Because you don't understand. Um, but it's not my cross to bear. So here, there's that. Ooh. Uh, mm. that's I think I just told thing. you that yesterday, right? Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. Not meaning I told her that something was... Um, it was about no okay. I just want to clear that. <laughs> Me and her ain't got no problems, but <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> they be like, "Ooh, what they was beefing oh, about?" Wow. No. <laughs> That'll be a whole other thing. And oh lord. Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. moving on to this final step. Mm-hmm. Moving forward. Yes. The final step is making a commitment to move forward. With a new sense of purpose and direction. This involves creating a vision 
for the future and taking mm -hmm. steps to make sure that vision is a reality, such as setting goals, seeking support and engaging in activities that promote healing and growth. Yeah. This is why y'all need y'all journals. Cause I told mm -hmm. y'all the Lord said, write the vision, make it plain. Listen, commit to whatever that vision is. Yes. And leave what was back there. You already sat in it. You felt the pain. You acknowledged. You accepted it. You did all of those things. Mm -hmm. You've done all of this work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, this is like the glory part, right? This is like the part you really get to enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. You done did all the hard work, all the crying and blubbering, all of that. Now mm -hmm. you get to the victory. This yes. is the victory, the moving forward. Yes. yes. A lot yes. of times we're looking at moving forward as a sad thing. Like when you're breaking up in a romantic relationship and the moving out, you know, you crying and snotting. That is the victory. You are moving forward. <sighs> that part. Yeah, that, that moving forward piece is so good. I could taste it. It's so yummy mm -hmm. um, because it is a vision. It is a, a goal, aspiration. When we set our thoughts towards good and positive things, mm -hmm. they will come. Now, we can deal with the stuff. We can be in that place for however long it takes you. Mm -hmm. But once it's all said and done, we mm -hmm. are going to come up with this plan. And we are going to execute it little by little. And it is possible, but it's definitely a switch flip in your mind. Mm -hmm. And I think it is so important. And that's where God wants us to get to. Mm -hmm. That's the goal, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, get your people, set the goals, get the support, engage in stuff, try new things. And continue to promote your healthy living. Yes. You will be triggered. You will have moments mm -hmm. of things that try to set you back. Mm -hmm. But remember, you're moving forward. I'm not allowing people to take me back to this space. I'm mm -hmm. not allowing me to give up on me anymore. Mm -hmm. Now I said before, I'm not fumbling me again. I'm not yes. doing that. Absolutely. Okay? So be steadfast and ten toes down in that. Yes. You know, it's just really good. It's really good. And that's where I try to focus my attention on majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Like, are we, we here now. When Total even, vision. Hello? Even looking back on my last two years, where I was two years ago, mm -hmm. and I am not there now. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. come on. Like, yeah. let's keep moving forward. Chugga, 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 chugga. Yeah. Choo choo. Even where even where we both were a year ago. Yeah. Let's look back on some of them old episodes. Look yeah. at some of them old lives. Where where your girl was crying all night. Like, listen, I know that progress has been made. Yeah. I know I'm not at the end yet, but I can see it. Yeah. I can see it, but mainly I want it. And yeah. that's why we ask the question, like, are you really ready for this? Because you have to be ready. You can't just be walking around saying, I'm a, I'm a star healing. When you really don't want to do the work that you're still fearful. If you're still living in that space, then you're not ready yet. And that's okay. You yeah. can come back to these episodes when you get ready. When you're ready. And then when start doing the work. But you have to be ready because yeah. it takes work. It a takes lot of work. work. It's going to take yeah. some crying and it's going to take some sitting alone and it's going to take some journaling and figuring things out Yeah, to get to the end goal. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about the goals. Yes. The goals after navigating the stages. Okay. <laughs> um. One goal is increase self-awareness, okay? Um, as individuals move through the stages of emotional healing, they may become more self-aware, gaining a better understanding of their emotions, thought patterns, and 
behaviors. This increase in self-awareness can help individuals identify and change negative patterns and develop greater self-acceptance and self-compassion. Child, Sam, I don't know about you, but that self-compassion? I knew you was going to start there. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, Tell the people. I be having to give myself grace often. Even I can use today as an example. I had a plan. I'm going to do this, 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 and that. My whole week has been thrown off because of weather and because mm -hmm. of school changes and my own plans being changed. And it threw my whole routine off that mm -hmm. I was sitting in a groove of. Mm -hmm. I had a vision like, okay, at this time, from this time to this time, from this time to this time, I'm going to mm -hmm. be like, mm -hmm. on the screen. and none of that has went according to me. <laughs> And usually, Portia would be over here internally mm -hmm. and also acting out you know, outwardly uh -huh. uh, by frustrated attitude, just like, uh, I'm, or just wanting to give up on everything because it did not go the mm -hmm. way that I planned. Mm -hmm. But instead, I have been practicing my self compassion and, like, you know what, Portia, even though you, it didn't go the way that you wanted it to go, mm -hmm. you still were productive. Mm -hmm. You still did this. Mm -hmm. The kids are happy. They were fed. This and that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. And take those small victories. Small victories. Every point of progress shall be duly noted. Yes. Period. If you're one of those people that make these long to-do lists, that's okay because I do it too. And, and, and P is real bad. But anyway. <laughs> and, and you got um, 20 things on that to do list and you got through eight you got through eight even if you got through one i ain't gonna hold you yeah my therapist tells me this all the time you need to make your to-do list one task a day mm -hmm. one task mm -hmm. because if you are that type of person that get overwhelmed by the little things mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Just minimize, make it fit whatever you can yes. manage. Be realistic with what you can manage. One task a day. Okay, I did that. Oh, mm -hmm. I did that one. Then, then you'll start feeling great. You'll be like, oh, let me add two. Let me do two. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it, you know, nope. listen, if you know that this is an issue for you, then yeah. why keep making it an issue for you? That Because you can manage that. Yes. That's like something small that you can manage, right? Yes. It's a little thing. You like she said, instead of putting 15 things on that list, yeah. You can put the one thing on the list and spread that 15 things out over the course over of the, the week. week. Yes. Yes. Give and now something. you're not feeling like a failure. Yeah. You're feeling like a success because you are a success. You are. You did that. You did oh, that. You, you see did you. That. You need to start telling yourself, I see you. I see you, girl. Look at you. Did you see Niecy Nash's acceptance speech? What? Period. Okay. She said, I want to thank me for believing in me. For trusting me. Listen, at the end of this, we're going to give our own selves awards. I just came up with this in this moment. And so, and give me grace. But yeah. at the end of this, we're I'm not going to give you an award. P is not going to give you an award. You're going to give yourself an award. You. And you're going to thank yourself for all the hard work. Yes. Because nobody could have did it but you. But you. But you. Yes, increase self awareness. Mm -hmm. Be aware of the little things that you of are doing. It all counts. It all adds up. It all matters. It Count it all true. glory. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. So this is a great goal, and navigating it is really. I enjoy it. I I've been enjoying it. I'm like, shoot, I'm doing my thing. And I even got to that point with. My situation, like, you may not be doing it and you may not be able, but guess who is doing it? I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep patting myself on the back. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Listen, 
And this will also take us to the next goal because it'll mm -hmm. lead into improved relationships. Mm. Emotional healing can have a positive impact on relationships. Yes. As individuals become better able to communicate their needs and emotions and develop greater empathy and understanding for others. Mm -hmm. As individuals heal from past emotional wounds, they may find that their relationships become more fulfilling and positive. Hear you. Listen. It's the inevitable. Gone are the days of us having these relationships where people are not doing the work and not working on their own healing and therefore they are abusing you because they ain't dealing with they shit. I tell people all the time and I need to take my own advice because I don't always mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure we're all guilty of it. Absolutely. But stop making they shit your shit. It's not your shit. Let them deal with they shit. They keep dumping on you and dumping on you and abusing you with their words and emotions. It's not fair to you. You trying to work on yourself and somebody always ain't that, that in your ear and you crying and all emotional because of they shit. If you got friends that don't want to do the work, get you some new friends. Yeah, it's... It's a whole thing, but it is the inevitable. You will, the more emotional healing that mm -hmm. happens for you, your relationships will definitely show up differently. Mm -hmm. You will be different. And even what you attract will be different. Mm. What you tolerate will be different. And it will be a really good space for you to be in. And those around you. Um, yes. I, I... I, I love this. I love this space. Um, yes. It is a work in progress. I, I feel like, to be honest, I feel like I learn something new about myself every day, what I can handle, what I can tolerate, and what I absolutely will not tolerate or take on, right? And so, you know, if you can offer anything to someone that is struggling in the relationship department, then do that. But if it becomes at the detriment of you, save you. I just had this conversation with a good friend this morning. I was like, why are you still saving them? You are trying to save them. You know, you don't want to ruin their reputation. So you don't want to tell what you know, what happened, ex and so. Meantime, you are drowning. With, you worrying about his life vest and you ain't got yours. That's why they tell you on the plane, put your mask on first, then help the others. Save you. If, if you got to make a decision, you or me. It should always be me. And this is a lesson I had to learn. Because I am and was and working on not being. But I was very much so someone that's like, oh, but they need me right now because they're going through this. And they're struggling with that. And I can't just walk away. Listen. You can, you should, you will. Walk away. Run. I just told you, it's not my cross to bear. I have prayed, wished them well, prayed for healing in all areas of their life. But I am not losing another day of sleep. And I certainly am not shedding another motherfucking tear. My tears are now reserved for me. You got to figure out your life and your healing. This is not my problem. It's not my problem. 
I, I mean, did all I knew how to do. I have no more to give. The rest that I have in my cup is for me. That's it. That's all. <laughs> it's for me. And it should be for you. You guys got to figure out if you have been struggling in this area. I'm here today to tell you stop that shit. And stop saying they would do it for me. I don't give a fuck if they would do it for you. Listen, save yourself first, then save the others. Especially if they have a track record of not doing it for you or anybody else in their orbit. Ooh, pay attention to that, that shit. If nobody else in their life like them, it's it's them. It's not the other people. It's them. <laughs> They are like people in their orbit can be selling the facade too. Everybody, like every nobody wants to acknowledge or say out loud that this person is trash. Nobody wants to. That don't make it not true. Trash ass individuals. Don't surround yourself with those kind of people because you get the trash on you. You start smelling of the, the junkyard. Oh, the swamp. Okay. Period. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the next goal is greater resilience. Okay? Emotional healing can help individuals develop greater resilience or the ability to bounce back from challenges and adversity. As individuals work through past emotional trauma, they may develop greater coping skills and a stronger sense of inner strength and resilience. Bounce back. I think I said that. Uh, when it came to the pain thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I really, you know, I thought I proved how resilient I was giving birth to children and actually like surviving off of running off of films, mm -hmm. barely getting sleep, trying mm -hmm. to I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying, doing all the things. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm still I feel like I'm still still in that war. Anywho <laughs> uh, but um at that time I, I even though I had a partner, I felt alone. Mm -hmm. Now that I truly am alone, it's like, I don't think I'm strong enough to handle this. Uh -huh. but I have proven to be very resilient. Okay. And this is definitely a great area of healing mm -hmm. that is very shine a light on them. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, look at all that you have accomplished. Look at yes. all that you have done. You have not just dwindled away and you know, you ain't curled up and mm -hmm. it's not doing, like, you're doing the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you are stronger than you thought. And even though, you know, I said before, like, I don't want to always be categorized as strong. Um, but resilience is a thing. It's mm -hmm. that strength. It's that mental strength. It's a lot within that. And so I, I think this is a great, great area, great goal to get to after you finish this healing stages. Okay. Mm -hmm. But isn't it also that this too shall pass? You know, you, you, you know that I'm going to be able to make it through this thing because it will pass. You know, this feeling of sadness and hurt and heartache, it will pass. That's that's resilience, you know. Yes. I, I'm gonna be okay. I, I'm I'm sad in this moment. I'm gonna feel my feelings, and then this will pass. Yeah, and I'm gonna come out even better because of this experience. Because I think it's hard to see that when you're in it. Most times, though, mm -hmm. like I think we know ultimately that's a possibility, mm -hmm. but. Like when you're in it, it's like Lord, is it ever gonna end? Is it ever? Am I ever going to be happy again? Am I ever going to find love again? Am I ever going to 
feel happiness again, right? Yeah. It's that when you're in the moment, especially when you're in the grieving stage, yeah. you're just like, is this pain ever going to go away? Yes, yes. But the coping skills, baby, I'm telling you, it is so important to get those skills up. Get them in your, yo, I don't care if you got a Batman utility belt, you better put them there and mm -hmm. utilize them when you need to. Yes. Because it is going to help you. Healthy coping skills. Not yeah. the old bad you know, my, my major one was eating bad. Like mm -hmm. that was a coping skill, but it wasn't healthy for me. Mm -hmm. So now I have to replace that bad habit with a good habit. Ooh. Okay. So now I got this better, more developed coping skill. And now I, I'm showing like, oh, I really can do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I really am disciplined. Mm -hmm. like, think those things as which they were. Okay. Yes. And act accordingly. Act Shoot. accordingly. Yeah, no. And and I think when you start moving different, people start treating you different. Because they see your light coming a mile away. And so they have to acknowledge it. Yeah. It's just like, you know, if you go to your pastor's house, I'm a, I'm a cussing saint, okay? Real, real bad. Mm -hmm. I got it back. But if I go to my pastor's house or I go to your grandmama house, I'm not going to be cussing at your grandmama house. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it, it's it's a certain level of respect. And so when you walk and move a certain way, people will respect you in that way. And yeah. so it, you got to take your power back in this in this healing journey. No That's what it's really all about. Right. And so yes. you can do this. You can do this. Another goal is improved physical health. Here we go again. Here we go again. You know, my old church used to say, here we grow again. Yes, come on. So here we grow again. again. All right. Let's Emotional go. healing can also have a positive impact on physical health mm -hmm. as it can reduce stress and improve overall well-being. Studies have shown that chronic stress and emotional trauma can lead to a range of physical health problems, including high blood pressure, heart disease, and autoimmune disorders. By reducing stress and promoting relaxation, emotional healing can help prevent these negative health outcomes. Yes. Get your health together. Yes. If you have not already had your yearly physical, do that. Figure out what things you need to work on and improve and stop ignoring the aches and pains. Stop ignoring that stuff because it could be a much bigger issue than even you know. Hmm. That is so interesting. <laughs> you said that. That you said that. What the hell? Well, shit. I mean, people people drop it like flies. God damn it! I don't want to be one of the flies. If this ain't the kettle calling the pot black, when the pot calling the kettle black, what's happening? <laughs> I've, I've learned my lesson. I don't want to be a part. I don't want to be in the number. So don't want to be going to the doctor in the morning. Damn it. <laughs> Listen, listen, it's okay, Tam. We are all there in one way or another. Where I, I was in my depressive state. I wasn't trying to go to the doctor or nothing else. I just wanted to thing. sit None on the thing. couch and, and be sad, god damn it. And yeah. now I'm ready to deal with all the things. Yeah. I'm, re I'm really ready. This is a season in my life where I'm ready. I'm like, I am sitting in my feelings and feeling them. Yeah. And I'm giving myself time to recover mm -hmm. from what I consider to be a great loss, whether anybody else um, felt that way or not. It's mm -hmm. my truth. And it's not really yeah. important what anybody else feels or thinks about it. Yeah. And so uh, several great losses in 2023 I experienced. It wasn't just one thing. It was a lot of things. Yeah. And so... um. I am actively working to getting my health back in order, getting my weight under control, mm -hmm. getting my stress eating in order, like mm -hmm. all of the things that I've let fall by the wayside in this last year because I was dealing with 
a lot of loss in 2023, mm -hmm. but I'm not carrying that over into 2024. This is a new day. A new season. A new day? And, yes. Period. Let's go. Let's go. Go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Get go your weight up or down. That part. <laughs> and I'm guilty of going to the doctor. I get my yearly physical. First of all, I pay too much in insurance not to. Second of all, uh, I get my yearly physical and I get all my labs back and all the things and they've talked about to me about certain things and I feel like, okay, okay, I'm still mm -hmm. young. I got time. I got mm -hmm. time to put it under control. Mm -hmm. Okay. But also, what are you doing, Portia? Like, again, be honest with yourself. Yes. You can improve your physical health. It really will help. But that, like they said, the emotional healing can also have a positive impact on your physical health. Mm -hmm. So when your emotional health is good mm -hmm. and you're in a place that you can gather yourself and get yourself up off that couch. Yes. Eating, eating so much, you will want to be more physically active. You will want to start that physical transformation, mm -hmm. regardless if you're trying to gain weight or lose weight or just maintain, mm -hmm. it's about being healthy. Yes. Right? So I'm really excited about this goal. This is a huge goal of mine in 2024. This has been a, a goal of mine for many a years, but I really feel like I'm finally in the space mentally and emotionally that I can maintain mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited. I'm excited. And your support group looks different. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. it ain't no quick fix, it ain't mm -hmm. no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, slow and steady wins the race. That's what that's what they told me. Yes, for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. Yes, I'm here for it. Okay. I'm excited. I hope they're excited. You guys, are you guys excited? Are you excited? I hope so. I see you, I see all of y'all, I see y'all mm -hmm. in the chat, and I know y'all are excited. About yeah. what's to come. This is a segment that we like to call Who All Gonna Be There? It's relationship stories of me and peace. And so I, I had mentioned earlier that I would save a story for later mm -hmm. in my healing journey. So, quick story. And I referenced this earlier um, when I was talking about not feeling supported enough to be able to really talk about what I was dealing with. And so, um, as I have said many times, I had a lot of things come at me in 2023. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of laws. I had a huge friendship loss and a relationship loss. And those things was coming at me back to back, right? And so, I was having a really hard time after a while still saying, I'm still sad and I'm not ready to move on yet. And I'm still in a very bad space and I'm like fucked up. Like I was having a real hard time saying that because, you know, I had been sharing a lot of my story with my friend group and, and they was like, fuck them and, and fuck them and you need them name shit. And, and I was like, yeah, yeah. And, and I know that their support in in the, in them saying that was coming from a place of love but also it didn't allow me to be as vulnerable as I wanted to be and so not all blame on them either because some of it was me just every time I talked about it I was like super choked up and very emotional and I was tired of feeling weak or appearing weak and so I just was like I don't want to talk about it no more. So I did everything possible not to talk about it, to try to avoid it. I blew it off. You know, if anybody asked me, I just kind of was like, oh, you know, I'm I'm fine now. I'm finally fine. I was not fine. I was not. Don't do that in your That's healing right. journey. Yeah. I encourage you to be honest about how you're feeling and where you are in your journey mm -hmm. because you cannot heal what you're hiding. That part. If they are your friends, no matter how much they hate that nigga, 
they will listen to you cry and they will be supportive and they will come over with tissues and all the things they if they are truly your friends they will be there for you in this very vulnerable moment that you're having moments years however the fuck long it takes for you yeah. to get to a healthy space but you are never going to be healthy if you're lying about the space that you're in because ultimately yeah. the only person you're lying to is yourself yeah don't do that yeah yeah you are worth whatever it is mm -hmm. that you're experiencing and you're experiencing for a reason so i think you are worth the time that it takes and if people won't allow you that space, then those aren't the people that you should be mm -hmm. sharing that space with in the first place, right? I mean, we can all take accountability for our roles in the parts, right? Mm -hmm. So even if you wanted to cry every time you talked about it, mm -hmm. there still should have been space allowed for you just to emote. But the thing is, is that to be honest, if you, if, and that's why I said don't hide it, because if I'm not saying to you, that this response is not helping me. Yeah. Then you don't know right. that the response is hurting me instead of helping me. And yeah. so I think that that's what we feel a lot in relationships because we're not honest with each other. We're not saying all the things. We're sweeping shit under the rug. Mm -hmm. We're not really addressing it. And, and, mm -hmm. and when we do address it, we're addressing it in anger. We're not addressing it when we're feeling vulnerable, when we're feeling, yeah. we wait until we are pissed yep. and then address it. And um, yep. that's not healthy. Um, mm. And that's not going to help your healing journey. So if you need to go back and tell anybody anything about your healing journey and ask them to be patient, to not drag your ex, to not talk bad about your ex friend, whatever, mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. So that you are actively creating a safe space for yourself in mm -hmm. your friend group. Now I ask the question, what we doing today? Are we dragging this nigga or not? <laughs> you know what we doing? Like what what you feel like doing today? Okay, we talking about it. Okay, cool. Right. Are we gonna I, talk? We drag that yeah. right. Right. Yeah, let's know what energy we in. Right. You know, when you, you know better, you do better. Right. How you want to act, it's whatever, it's whatever. Like, you know whatever. what I'm saying? But, but have these honest conversations. Yeah. I implore you because yeah. you are going to need your support system during this very, very difficult journey and you know for for me for me right now and also for p um we're not actively dating um for me i'm on a 90 day hiatus if it lasts longer than that lord if it lasts longer than that so be it i don't think the lord would do that to me <laughs> oh god but during that time i am reading Mm -hmm. I'm back in my Bible. Girl, that thing is already highlighted left and right like I had it for years. I just got it a week ago. Listen, <laughs> I got questions, Lord, and I need answers. And so yeah. um, I'm asking them. Don't be afraid to ask the Lord your questions. Nope. He don't mind. Really? You don't mind. He will answer them. He already knew you had questions before you knew you had questions. Exactly. So ask the questions. But during this um, 90 day hiatus, I am reading this book, Your Night in Shining Armor. We will link it in the mm -hmm. chat. If you feel like you need to take a 90 day hiatus, listen, you might be in a relationship and need to take a 90 day hiatus to figure out if he the night in shining armor or you believe in your lying ass. Listen, I don't know. And I'm also reading this book, What a Time to Be Alone. We're going to link these in the bio so that if these speak to you, you can pick up one for yourself. Listen, write in them, highlight, journal about what you read. Do all the things because nobody knows what you need but you. You. you.
Period. I agree. I'm so happy. Like, this is such a good space to be in. It's a new journey. It's feeling good. It's filled with excitement. Mm -hmm. Um, There will be a lot of highs, but also a lot of lows. And that's okay. Because that's life. Um, But be willing. Be willing to do it. Be willing Mm -hmm. to try. And do not have stage fright. Do not have stage fright. Go through these stages because it will get you to the ultimate goal. Yes. Thank you guys for joining us again. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope that you got something out of this episode. I hope that you are ready to now dive deep because these next episodes, child, bring your tissue. I'm not showing up without my tissues in these next episodes because we really going to get into the nitty gritty of the things. We got some special guests on the way. Um, yeah. This season is about to be lit. Period. Period. So, so join exactly. us. Tap in to all the feelings. Be ready because we're ready. We love you guys. And that's why we're sharing and being super vulnerable. This is yes. not an easy space to be in to show you all what we're really, really dealing with on a day to day. So we letting y'all in in a way that we haven't let in some people that say they love us, Jeff. Because they, because them people that love us, they ain't even know I'm following, subscribe, paying attention to. It be your own people. Anyway. Be your own people. Ooh, Let the people get out of here, Portia. Let the people get out I'm of here. I'm telling you. Well, <laughs> that'll do it. Uh, <laughs> thank y'all for joining us today. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Okay? Let us know what things you like to hear from us in the future. If there are any topics you'd like to discuss, etc., you can email us at t and p at theafterpartypod.com to ask all of your burning questions and show topics. Be on the lookout for our subscriber-only events, and we'll be back with another episode in two weeks as we will discuss. We're going to discuss one of these stages. We got to get into it. So be there or be square. Bring your journals. We love you guys. (laughs) Tap in.